early, early people. We've got about five minutes, so we're going to wait for some people to jump on and uh, just hang out for a few minutes. Um, might just play some pretty guitar music in the background, because who doesn't like to wake up to pretty acoustic guitar music? So, we'll be back in just a few, and uh, we'll jump in. Ooh, all right, all right, all right. It is 6 a.m., which is really an amazing hour. If you're not always up at 6 a.m., you are just missing out on the wonderful things that happen uh, before the sun comes up. So I'm told. There are apparently a lot of good things that happen before the sun comes up. But we are early people, as you all know. Uh, so today... Uh, we are continuing our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, if you've been keeping up so far, today is day 17. 
uh, out of 21. So uh, I hope you've been encouraged so far. I know uh, for me personally, it's been really, uh, really amazing to be able to hear people's hearts uh, as they go through their own devotions throughout the book of John. And uh, I love uh, going through books that we may not read on a regular basis um, because when we really dive into chapters, that forces us to think uh, a little more deeply uh, about our own lives, about our own uh, spiritual lives, about our relationship with God. Uh, so, you know, if you're not one that uh, finds it easy to jump into scripture, uh, you know, give yourself that challenge this year. It's, you'll find some amazing insights that uh, God has for us as we uh, do deep dives here, uh, in this case, in the book of John. But uh, today we are on uh, chapter 17. So, uh, chapter 17 is an interesting point in the book of John because this is uh, what's called the high priestly prayer. Uh, and this is uh, the last prayer that happens before uh, the events of the betrayal and crucifixion begin to take place. Uh, so, uh, this whole chapter is really uh, Jesus praying to his Father, God. Um, and uh, it's divided into kind of three different parts. Um, I really like to have at least an outline for where I'm going when I jump into scripture because number one, it just makes it a little more digestible and easy to understand. Um, but also because it's a little easier to organize in my own head, uh, because I tend to be, uh, highly disorganized at times. So if I know where I'm going, it gives me a little bit of a roadmap and that helps me out uh, a lot. So, uh, as we dive into this, uh, just know that like, uh, this chapter in particular is divided into kind of three parts, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, three parts. So, uh, part one. Uh, happens in the first five verses. And this is where uh, Jesus is really uh, praying for himself and the conclusion of his mission. Uh, so he's talking about, uh, he's praying to God and saying, I've glorified you on earth, uh, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you uh, before the world existed. So, uh, this was kind of like the, this is a passing the baton moment for Jesus. Like he, he was aware that his time was getting ready to come to an end, which is kind of amazing if you think about it in a lot of different ways. Um, but his first prayer was that, uh, really God would be glorified through everything that was, uh, not just happening to him presently, but everything that was going to happen to him, uh, in the very near future. And that future <laughs> begins in the next chapter, uh, chapter 18, which, uh, we'll be getting to tomorrow. Um, so verse one through five, that's kind of our first movement of this chapter. Uh, the second movement uh, kind of begins here in verse six. Uh, and this is where the focus shifts a little bit in verse six. Uh, this is where Jesus begins to pray uh, for his immediate disciples and their mission that they were here to carry out uh, on this earth. So all the people that Jesus surround himself with, uh, he prays for them personally right here and says, um, uh, says now they, verse seven, now they know everything that you have given me is from you, for I've given them the words that you gave me, and they've received them and come to know the truth that I came, that I came from you, and that they had believed uh, that you sent me. Uh, just as reference, I'm reading out ESV this morning, uh, because I really like the verbiage uh, in this chapter in particular. Uh, so as he goes on, he begins to pray for the mission uh, of the disciples. He knows that he's sending them out into the world. He knows that he's not going to be around a whole lot longer. Uh, and that all kind of culminates in verse 18. Um, so in verse 18, he says, as you sent me into the world, so I've sent them into the world and for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also, uh, be sanctified in truth. So the second movement, Jesus is praying for his immediate disciples, uh, on the mission that he has given them. But what we're going to kind of focus on this morning, uh, is this third movement, uh, the third movement, uh, this is verses 20 to 26. And this is where uh, I think it becomes really personal. Uh, for us. So Jesus prayed uh, for himself in the first movement and the second movement he prays for his disciples that were around him at the time. And here in this third movement, now Jesus is praying for his future disciples and their mission. So you ask, okay, who are, who are Jesus' future disciples? Well, um, you know, if you're giving your life to Christ, then hey, this is about you. Uh, you are the future disciples that Jesus is praying for. Uh, so looking at it in this light, um, I'm going to read just this last section through just so we can really uh, comprehend the weight of these words. So uh, in verse 20, it says, uh, I do not ask for these only, uh, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, future tense, right? That they may all be one, 
just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you've given me, I've given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I am in them, uh, I'm sorry, I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so the world will know that you sent me and love them, even as you loved me. So, uh, in, in this, it's, it's amazing to me. Like, Jesus assumed that his immediate disciples were going to fulfill their mission, their role in the world. So he goes that next step further and says, but hey, I'm going to pray for uh, the future disciples that are going to be on this earth to fulfill the task that, uh, that God has given them. So what is that task for us? That task uh, is that they would go out into the world, that the world would know that they are one by not just their, uh, the unity that we show uh, for one another because we're united in the mission that God has sent us out with, uh, but also, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is so dry this morning. <laughs> oh, I apologize for that. Um, but also that we would be known by our love uh, for one another, and that's how we would fulfill that mission. And that's how uh, the world would know that we are united in that mission and because we represent Jesus. Uh, so uh, this gets uh, personal for all of us. It gets personal for me uh, to know, first of all, that uh, we are... We are not just here to exist, all right? We are, we are not just here to uh, go to church on Sundays, to be in small groups, to do all these things that we do uh, when we uh, come together on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays, whatever other days we meet during the week, but that we have an active mission in the world uh, that was determined uh, before Jesus was even crucified. Oh, thanks. Um, that was there before Jesus was even crucified. He knew exactly uh, what we were going to be sent out to do. And uh, he told us ahead of time, he said, hey, your love for one another is going to be the testimony to the world around you. And uh, that that was kind of echoed back in John, uh, I think chapter 13. If you had been following along the book of John, you read chapter 13. Uh, it says back there, it says, uh, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Uh, so love, you know, showing love, I think, in an active way. Uh, I feel like can be really difficult for me because I, I think I am good at showing love in a passive way. Um, you know, to not get upset with people easily, to uh, be patient with those around me, to uh, try to have their best interests at heart. Like, it's, it's, I don't think it's that, that hard uh, to have passive love for one another because really passive love is like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the, border, the, the bottom rung, like, hey, I can put up with this person um, but that doesn't really mean I want to be around them. That doesn't mean I really believe that I'm united with them. Uh, but if we are both in Christ, then that means that impetus is on us to actively uh, love that person because if the world is looking uh, at us as Christians as a testimony uh, of to, to who Jesus is, then that means we can't just have a past love for one another. We have to be actively engaged in that. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about that. Like, what does it mean to be uh, engaged in uh, loving one another, being united with one another. And like the, the, that's a heavy consequence uh, for us because the, the world is watching how we treat one another, um, how we act towards one another, like the world is watching because that's the testimony of who we are. And uh, I think the danger uh, that I know I have is uh, I tend to be an over, uh, overly reliant upon intellect uh, and I tend to intellectualize things that would probably be better off uh, using my emotion for, better off being a little bit more emotional in a lot of ways. Um, and if that was truly the case, like I don't think I would have as difficult of a time uh, truly loving those around me as I do sometimes. Um, and there was a quote by uh, Michael Gorman. He wrote a book um, called Abide and Go, and he said, uh, in a sense, he's talking about the disciples, but he's also talking about us. He said, in a sense, the disciples are a community because love is a magnetic force to a watching world. So, like, what's it look like for us to begin to see the way we treat one another, the way we are united in our mission, uh, in the way that we show love to one another, and that the world is watching, and a lot of times that has a direct consequence on how people uh, view us as a Christian community. Um, and, man, if we think of the way to that, like, what does that look like 
uh, in our engagements with one another? How does that change how we treat people, how we take care of one another? Uh, really deep thought. Um, and so often for myself, like I said, I, it's, it's hard for me to figure out what it is to actively uh, care about somebody instead of to passively care about someone. So like for me, um, I would uh, always find it easier uh, to disengage rather than to engage, uh, especially if there's conflict arises. I'm like a classic uh, conflict avoider. Like I don't, I, I don't avoid, uh, I don't know how to put it. I, I don't care that there's conflict there, but I will actively step outside of it and just kind of watch with some popcorn and see what happens, <laughs> which is a terrible thing to say. But like when things get tense, uh, it's not that I shy away from it, but I just disengage and just watch to see how everybody else kind of reacts to the situation. Uh, so like that, that's, not, that's not actively uh, loving people in that moment. I recognize that that is just disengaging and just uh, watching chaos ensue, which <laughs> should not be uh, a pastime of mine, but sometimes it kind of is. And I have to recognize that and know that at times in my life. Um, uh, for me to figure out what it is to actively uh, love the world means I need to think uh, about how to actually engage uh, with people instead of disengaging. Um, so uh, when I am, especially at church on Sundays, like all right, Sundays I am, I get together with an amazing group of believers. Uh, I am there uh, to do uh, a job, and it's a spiritual job, right? Like it's it's to to lead worship, and it's an amazing thing. It's it's like, you know, the, the best seat in the house to be able to be up there on Sunday morning, just see uh, how God is moving amongst a whole group of people. Um, but what happens is it's very easy to uh, kind of just uh, avoid people like, you know, in between services, not go out to the lobby or just kind of passively walk through because uh, my mind's on the next thing that we have to get ready for. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, you know, God is, is beginning to, in the last year and a half especially, uh, really tug on my heart of like, hey, what does it look like to stop, to take time, to instead of being passive, to actively engage with people? Yes, that means that, um, you know, I'm going to be interrupted a little bit uh, when I've got to be running back and getting things ready in 10 minutes and I might end up with an eight-minute conversation and then feel rushed for the rest of the morning. Um, but it's our, uh, our real job is to, to go out in the mission and be united so that the world can see as a testimony uh, the power of who Jesus Christ actually is. Uh, so for me, um, I, I know that God's been changing that a lot, changing my desires within that uh, in the last particularly year and a half. Um, and I'm trying to lean into that, to live into that a little bit. Um, every situation I have with someone to really say, hey, how can I actively engage this person, love this person, uh, be present? with this person uh, when I don't actively and naturally uh, tend to do that. Um, so I'm gonna live with like this active mission mentality that I'm active in my uh, unity with those around me because we are fulfilling uh, the same thing, which is we wanna see uh, Jesus' name lifted high in our community. We want to uh, be united with one another. We want to take care of one another. We want to show the world that the way we treat each other is a testament and a testimony to who Jesus Christ is. So next time I want to sit and argue with somebody over something really petty, then I need to be reminded myself, okay, this is a time to actively love this person, engage with this person, not disengage, because that is my testimony to who Jesus Christ is. So today, um, all that being said, I am fasting for, uh, for a better awareness in myself. Um, especially in these uh, next coming months, uh, a better awareness uh, of those around me, of what their needs are, to stop, to take time, to be engaged uh, in, the, in problems and situations instead of disengaging. Um, I am praying and fasting that uh, my life would look more like a testimony of who Jesus is and less like what I want it to be uh, on my own. So um, as we uh, as I get ready to pray here, uh, please, 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 uh, you know, put in the comments there, how can I pray for you today? Uh, I'm going to be looking back at this uh, every few minutes today, and like it is an honor to be able to lift up uh, prayers on your behalf, because that's a way that I can actively engage and uh, love you all today. So I would appreciate the privilege to do that. So anything uh, that's on your heart, feel free to throw it down there in the comments, um, and I'll be looking through those all day. We'll engage with it and 
uh, we can just lift those things up to God together. Uh, so with that, uh, would you pray with me right now? Uh, God, uh, thank you for uh, early mornings. Uh, thank you uh, for knowing uh, that you were sending us out, uh, even before you sent your son to die, knowing that we had a mission uh, in mind, that we would be called to be uh, a united community, that we would be called to show the world what uh, love looks like in the most active way. Uh, and Father, we know that, uh, that that love comes from how you love us, first and foremost. And God, it's love that we don't even understand at times. But in the same way, God, I pray that we can uh, reciprocate that to those around us as best as we can. Uh, Lord, for all those that are uh, struggling with uh, so many things right now, God, whether it's health situations, whether it's family issues, whether it's personal issues, God, I pray uh, for each and every one of them right now uh, that uh, they would be able to just rest in your presence, that your spirit would uh, really just wrap them up in, in the peace that you bring. Uh, Lord, we pay, pray for uh, healing where there is sickness. Uh, we pray for a uh, life where there is uh, spiritual death and decay. God, we pray for a new, uh, even a revival of our hearts. God, a revival of your spirit moving among us, uh, that we might see uh, the world with a different lens than we normally do, that we might look to see what it is to actively engage instead of to passively disengage. Uh, Lord, thank you for uh, giving us this day to dive into your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything that you are doing and everything that you are going to continue to do. And we look forward to that, uh, especially in these last few days of this uh, prayer and fasting that we've been going through. So God, thank you for uh, sending your spirit to be here among us. Thank you for your presence in our lives. And we give you all thanks and all praise. Amen. Thanks all. Be sure to tune in uh, tomorrow for chapter 18.